Welcome back. Project WorkSkills is an employability program designed by Ego Foundation to equip undergraduate and tertiary institutions across Nigeria with workplace readiness skills and basic digital skills. The project addresses United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by ensuring students receive their needed education to enable them to secure decent jobs, thereby ensuring economic growth post graduation. The project is targeted at final year students as well as students in their penultimate year in tertiary institutions all over the country. So right now, I have the executive director of the foundation, Toluwashi Olaniyo, joining me right now to discuss further. Good morning to you, Tolu. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, Justin. Thank mm. you for having me. Yeah. Uh, in my intro, I said over 70% of our Nigerian uh, population uh, falls below the, uh, the age of 30. It is really... Uh, very interesting to understand that uh, we have such population and yet we are not actually optimizing it because the issue of youth unemployment is rising by the day. How do you react? Um, I mean, thank you, Justin. Uh, and this is one big, um, I mean, I would say pandemic, so mm. to say, I mean, hitting us real hard. And this is largely because, like I've always said, we have um, left the the onions, or we have left the, the duty mm. of job creation and job promotion to the government alone, mm. right? Um, meanwhile, the private sector employs a lot more than the government. Mm. Um, but us leaving it to the government means that we expect the government to be able to, so we're not looking in the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not building skills that fits what the private sector requires, mm. right? So which is what the, mis the misfit and what has caused the imbalance that we've experienced over mm. time, right? Oh, yes, there's job shortage due to economic issues, but, I mean, it can be better. And I, I think in, in the days ahead, it will be better. Okay, because uh, what you're saying right now is that uh, these uh, young people graduate from schools, yet they don't have um, the set skills uh, yeah. that are required uh, to helping them get um, employed? Yes, yes. So, so bigger than unemployment, I mean, mm. or a, a, a one of the main costs of unemployment is mm. unemployability. Okay. Right? Um, talents not matching the required, um, the, the required prerequisite to mm. be able to get into the job. Mm. So, so it's, it is difficult for these employers to absorb these people because you don't fit into what we want, right? Mm. Employers ma the, the measure productivity right um how well are you able to do this job productively remember mm. that the essence of us creating a uh, creating uh, or starting a business in the first place is profit True. right mm. would does your skill would you be able to match up to this mm. right uh, a lot of people lack all of them and skills like critical thinking problem solving mm. right people would say oh, when i get it they will teach me yeah right oh yes when you get it they teach you Unfortunately, a lot of people still just do just what they have taught them mm. and not add a bit of initiative to it. Mm. Um, a lot of people lack communication skill. In fact, I know companies that have gone down because of lack of communication, um, I mean, amongst its, its members. So, it is, so this employability skills are really, really tough. Um, I mean, uh, I've made it really tough mm. for um, young stars to get into the workplace, which has created the white gap. Um, so... Tried hire for a few people a mm -hmm. few times. I realized that people would say, "Don't worry." Uh, all the people I've interviewed, I can't find anyone. I will increase the salary of people who are in at the moment mm. to give them more tasks to do. I give them more tasks to do instead of bringing in more people. So you see that people in the organization are being overworked, mm. and there are people outside who don't find jobs. Okay, I want to attend one of your um, employability. Uh, uh, project skills uh, in uh, the University of Lagos, uh, I noticed that uh, you t actually had to take uh, this campaign uh, to the campus as it is. Uh, why is it important that uh, the syllables or maybe the curriculum of uh, uh, tertiary institutions uh, should be uh, maybe revamped per se so that um, young people would actually have um, this requisite skills that we are talking about? Oh, okay. I mean, so thanks, Justin. So, so this, I think, sits largely with the, with the, the government and the bodies, right? Mm. I hear that the curriculum have been... Updated. Updated, mm -hmm. right, to a certain level. Again, the question we would ask is, do we have the right tools to, in, to work around the implementation of this new curriculum, mm. right? Because, mind you, 
this new curriculum would not just have to do with employability, okay. right? It has to do across the board. Oh. So for the guys in communication, then use of smart boards and all of that now. Yeah. So do we have like the required tools to be able to carry on oh. this new curriculum? Now, what a lot of schools have now done, like, I mean, so many schools have done it, is to now infuse a center for entrepreneurship or infuse entrepreneurship into mm. the curriculum, right? Well, um, so how do we now deliver on mm. this to say, oh, um, you're, not bring, you're not bringing entrepreneurship. What we now just do at entrepreneurship is just training them how to start business and run business, mm. right? And we're teaching them how to have conversation with customers, right? Knowing that customer is king. True. Now, this is communication skill, right? Oh, yes. So bring your idea. First, how do people even come up with ideas? Critical thinking, problem solving. You see a problem. How do you identify problems? So all of this, right? So um, I think that the best model, instead of saying, oh, revamp the curriculum, would be to partner with the private sector. Mm. And bring in the private sector, guys, to take real life case mm. around entrepreneurship around business and then around work right bring in the private sector have them tell these people tell the students what they will be facing when they come out there and it, i mean i think it'll solve the problem a whole lot i'm not sure it's totally a curriculum issue but okay. particularly when it comes to um, mm. um around employability okay. i think it's a it is it's a firm synergy between the workplace and the academic place, right? The academia and the um, workplace mm. having a solid handshake will then. So you bring in people who have exceed, who have um, succeeded mm. in the workplace, and say, okay. So I mean, bring HRs and say, oh, come, tell our students what they will be facing when they go out there. How will they cross this hurdle? How do they attend interviews, right? Um, I mean, so you can imagine someone who didn't do presentation in university, who didn't do anything, and you ask them to come and attend interviews. People mess up a lot of times, right, at interviews. So we need to be able to have that handshake, I mean, and even beyond the curriculum. Okay, so if I have to put it um, differently now, are you saying that uh, youth um, entrepreneurship is the panacea to the issue of uh, the unemployment issues that we have in the country right now? Oh, yes. So, I mean... Youth entrepreneurship is, is, is one solid one. Now, you see, what, you see that there's an uproar mm. in the number of young people that, are, that move into the labor market, mm -hmm. right? Now, a large number of students start their businesses while they are in the university. Okay, true. Right. How do we then support the student mm. to be able to take these businesses forward such that they're able to hire people from their classes. Now, so you can imagine a class of 300, right? We have 20 entrepreneurs who now hire two, two people from their class to join them um, on, their, uh, on this business. So it means that we have about 60 people from that class who already have jobs that, and they can push that and that can move forward. Mm. So we're just having to deal with about 240 people, right? And then other people can then absorb them. Mm. I mean, as, as it is, right? So youth entrepreneurship is a solid way to work around the, uh, I mean, unemployment court that mm. we think, uh, I mean, we're currently facing. Okay, well said now. But uh, if you look at it over the years, uh, the government um, um, has come out uh, with different uh, sort of plans and policies uh, to uh, help uh, tackle the issue of uh, unemployment. There was UWIN, there was Empire, there were a whole lot of them, but... Most of the times, uh, they were never really workable. And, uh, you know, so what would you really say has really gone wrong? And um, what more should the government be doing in ensuring that youths uh, actually uh, make the most of um, entrepreneurship development and also be their own bosses? Oh, okay, yes. So um, we play politics with, with this conversation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's to be able to win you, um, the interest of young people from time to time. Mm -hmm. right? and, and we just play politics with these things. Um, so there's been several initiatives. And I would not um, hit any government hard for bringing out another initiative after the previous one. Mm -hmm. But what I would always ask, and what I've always asked the government will always do, is to do a proper M&E, a &E, mm -hmm. monitoring evaluation um, of the previous project and see where it did not... It went wrong. Where, where wrong, right? Where it did not succeed, where mm -hmm. it went wrong, what happened. And then build on the lessons learned 
from the last one. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the least things that a business needs to survive is fun, is money. True. Right. So, but from all of what we've seen around what the government have designed over time is looking for ways to move money mm. and just oh, put in money, right? Uh, which is very, very, which is very, very sad. Mm. If we can actually be truthful with this model, help these people, and that's why entrepreneurship in university is very, very important. It's not just mm. in university, in tertiary institution, it's very important. So from when you're in, the, you're in school, you understand structure. You understand business processes. In fact, as you're going on interviews mm. to go talk to an employer, you already understand that I am a potential employer. I know what the employer is looking out for, and I'm seeing what the employer is looking out for. Mm. Right. So, so that solves the big problem of um, of 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 having. I mean, um, on a, of having issues that are and, and having programs okay. that are not successful. Do a thorough M and E. Um, work with institutions around entrepreneurship. How would you be able to do this? This. How can you move your business from this point to this point? Oh, you sell. Um, you sell cakes, um, cupcakes in the uni in in your hostels. Mm. How can it become a large confectionery store? Work with students around all of this. Then. Once you've seen that people have gained traction, put money in the hands of people whose business have been successful, mm -hmm. right? Let there be a reinvestment and a refunding model to say, oh, if you do well, you can come back, right? Okay. Those models work. Not just one-off model, light the matches, it burns off, and you throw and you throw the match stick away. Mm -hmm. Let there be a reinvestment model. Let people see that, oh, you're interested in them. Mm -hmm. Not that we just put you in. People apply to two million. You give all of them to two million. Most people just going to buy cars. Mm -hmm. Just, some people just go rent houses. Some people just go live life mm. with the money. Nobody would ask me. And indeed, nobody would ask. Mm. Let it be, a, let it be a, a penalty for you wasting taxpayers' money. Right? Mm. Let it be a penalty for you wasting taxpayers' money. Let the, I mean, also because we don't have data in this country. So True. you don't know who has collected before, who, would, who is coming back to collect. collect so we just keep pushing it out there. All but right. yes, I mean, I think that government trying to do this is a, is, is a really amazing one. But there are consulting companies mm. that can be partnered with to do a proper m and &E and do a proper process management around the programs. All right. It is still um, Business Insights on Plus TV Africa. My guest is uh, Tolua Shea Olani. Uh, we are looking at the issue of uh, tackling youth unemployment through entrepreneurship. Uh, he's still with me. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and talk more about uh, what uh, youth can do to actually better their lot in terms of moving or upskilling their businesses. And again, uh, there is something for Nigerian youth, uh, some sort of exchange program that is in the works. So we'll talk about all of that when we return from this uh, quick break to join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at entrepreneurship development on the show this morning. And Tolu is my guest. Thanks for staying with me. Thank you so much, Justin. All right, you talked about the issue of um, funding, uh, which is uh, like uh, the bane of most people or startups, uh, people who just want to be their own bosses, uh, but haven't gotten funded. Uh, what would you advise them to do in the first... Uh, uh, most times we hear that uh, small businesses fail in the first five years. You know, so what would you advise them to do to actually stay in business? Okay, I mean, so, so a few times, and I, like I said to young people, um, the life of the organization is a young, is, are the people who work in the organization. I mean, oh. so if you don't have anybody working work in your organization, you don't have an organization in the first place. Is to invest and build the team and build, um, invest in the human capital mm -hmm. of the organization, right? Find the right team that works. Mm. And ensure that this team build a, a sustainable culture, right? So people do what they should do. There's a process, right? You continue this process. Um, you fine tune this process. It becomes better. Then you've built a system. You've built an organization. And then if you put money, the money won't waste mm. at that time, right? If you put money, the money won't waste. Um, and that's like the very first thing. Ensure that you build a solid structure, you build a solid system mm. that can take the company another 10 years, oh, or another so, 100 years. Okay, fine. That's a very good one. Yeah, in our pre-chat, just before we got on the studio here, you t we were talking about uh, a program designed uh, for young people. They could have some sort of exchange uh, uh, with the Western world. And uh, tell us about it and uh, how they, uh, people can actually benefit from this. Uh, you, t you tell me that it is free? 
Oh yes, so um, so we've just partnered with I mean, so Ego Foundation. I just partnered with um, um, Queen's University. Um, I mean, in, in, in Canada, and, um, and and the program is to open up young people, particularly students, mm. to um, to entrepreneurship opportunities. So we have a curriculum. You walk through the curriculum. Um, I mean, and successful candidates, people who walk through curriculum, stand a chance of getting, getting like a whole lot. Um, I mean, potential exchange programs and potential funding from 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 the program it is absolutely free. Right, uh, but then it's open to students, and like I said earlier, we are f looking out for the best ways to create opportunities for young people um, to be able to um, gather as much knowledge. I, w w I mean, knowledge is power, mm. right? So once you have knowledge, then you can do a whole lot, right? To be able to get knowledge. So Queen's University has opened up their um, curriculum um, to us in this partnership, mm. and we were looking out for people, I mean, young people, as much as possible apply for this um, run So anybody through. can just apply? I mean, as long as you're a student? As long as you're a student, oh, you can apply. Um, I'm a student entrepreneur. Walk through the, walk through the, um, walk through the curriculum. Mm. Um, I mean, at the tail end of it, there's a, there's a pitch um, competition. You, you can get to pitch your businesses. Um, I mean, you can also, like, I mean, stand a chance of, like, um, getting into um, an exchange uh, mm. program where you do, like, the second phase mm. of, of the program. But, I mean, it's a really, really robust program. Mm. And we're have, hopeful, everything is done online. Everything is done online. Online. And I'm hopeful that, I mean, and, and, I mean, I mean, once in a month we have like catch ups mm. where we like, I mean, have like conversation, more like um, engagement session mm. with, with participants to be able to ask questions, get feedback, and all of that. Mm. It's a really, really robust, um, I mean, program that we're mm. hopeful that young people can actually take advantage of this and we can like um, use this for national growth. Okay, so young people, there is an opportunity for you to uh, actually make the most of it. It is absolutely free. Uh, you can get um, an exchange program. It says Queen's University, you call it? Yes. Okay, so and there's a whole lot, and you can also pitch your business, and who knows just where you might uh, get uh, the necessary uh, support that you need uh, to upskill your business. But just before we go, now, last thing, uh, last word from you uh, for someone who is actually a businessman, a young person, and uh, because of um. Government's policies, uh, issues of uh, stability or instability as per today, uh, there is a policy tomorrow, it's been removed. Uh, and uh, right now they are having issues in staying in business and they don't know where to turn to. What would you ad your advice be for the person who is struggling in business? Okay, uh, I mean, so first, at this time, mm. globally, mm. we're all struggling in business. Everyone is, yes. <laughs> in Nigeria, we're all struggling in business. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I mean, that, that's what I like to know. And, and what I said to people um, over time, uh, particularly around this economy, is to keep your costs low. Mm. Keep the business active, but keep your costs low. Yeah. Right? And then, so what has happened, what we've seen over time is that the ground level up. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, so you see that um, well, you're unable to purchase this, you're unable to purchase this. Somehow, somehow, the grant, I mean, so we've seen that over the last eight years, too. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, some companies have, have closed up, some have, a lot have pivoted. Mm -hmm. But then you can only pivot into I make chin chin before, mm -hmm. but now I'm now making cakes. Cakes, <laughs> right? Or I'm <laughs> now making plantain chips. Plantain chips, okay. Because flour importation is more, a lot more expensive. Mm. So I'm unable to make um, chin chin. Mm. Um, but then for plantain chips, mm. right? Okay. Um, plantain is readily okay, available. I get you now. Yeah. Right? Okay. So it's about the same line, mm. right? So um, keep your costs low. Look out for the best way to pivot your business mm. or to move your business um, into other spaces and other segments. But Basically, keep your costs low. Like at this time, I mean, mm. I would advise that. Also, because recession is hitting the world, um, people are having. I mean, people now have lesser purchasing power. Yeah. Right. So, um, but keep your costs low. Mm. Most likely, you're able to. You will be able to service a lot more people over right. time, and then see how business can can scale. Thank you so much, Talu. Thank I do you so appreciate much, your time. for having me. All right, uh, as we go on the show to tackle the spate of youth unemployment, a group, Enterprise Growth and Opportunities Ego Foundation has trained university students on the requisite skills they need to be employable. Rising from its project work skills at the University of Lagos, the organizer Tolua Shilanio says the program will prepare participants for the world of entrepreneurship. I'll leave you with details in this report. I am Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. 
The nation's higher educational institutions equip graduates with hard skills while neglecting the development of employability skills, which are core for transitioning into the labor market as well as for workplace productivity. The lack of these skills in graduates keeps them in the pool of the unemployed, no matter their degree of certification. Now, Executive Director Ego Foundation Tuluashi Olaniyo says this project aims to equip participants with the right skill set for employment and also prepare them for the world of entrepreneurship. Uh, a good number of young people um, are currently not unemployed, they're able. And this is because uh, they lack the basic skills like critical thinking, problem solving, those skills that can help them perform in the labor market. So employers are not getting what they want from them. Unfortunately, they're able to employ them. And after the flag off of this project, we're setting up um, mentoring and coaching um, centers across different institutions where students are able to speak to coaches and are able to like have continuous um, career development sessions so that it doesn't just end here. One of the unique aspects of this training is to provide access to jobs for selected participants and also expose them to the realities of the workplace. Employability is an important part of um, our economic growth because when the people of the nation or the society are employed, productivity is increased as a company, I mean as a country, and um, the GDP of the country also try some productivity. A way forward is for people to actually consider a lot of capacity building trainings. The four walls of an academic institution is not going to provide all the kind of knowledge and skills you need. You have to self-develop, self-train yourself through different taking part in trainings, capacity building and the likes. There are several causes of graduate unemployment in Nigeria, including an inelastic labor market to absorb the turnover. Some of the participants share their thoughts. Still by skill acquisition, because most of the like most most companies now, I don't know how to put that English. Like, they don't really want to employ more because technology is already taking over over lots of um, jobs now. With the help of writing a good CV, because majority of us, I think the reason why we are not seeing good jobs is because of not like not like you can't write good CVs. So with this program now, so they are teaching us how to write good CVs on how to get good jobs. Another way to address the challenge of employability skill induced employment is to incorporate the learning of these skills in the curriculum of higher education.